The properties that we have looked at so far, which was the additive inverse and the additive identity, they apply to the set of integers. Now just look at the, let's just look at the properties specific to the addition of the integer. So the first property and the most basic property is that of the closure property of, of addition of integers. So what does that mean? It means that if I take any two integers, let's say minus, minus 5 and plus 3 or just 3 and I do an addition over those two, then my answer would necessarily be an integer. So that is the closure property similar to the closure property of whole numbers. It says that no matter which two integers I take, if I add them together, the answer would necessarily be an integer and that is to be expected, right? Because as we saw in the case of addition of integers, all we are doing is that we are adding and subtracting this magnitude. That is all we are doing and that would only result in an integer and then we are changing the sign based on the O primes. Again, that would always result in an integer. So there is no operation involved in the addition which could ever take us outside the realm of integers as long as my two O primes are integers and that is the closure property of addition of integers. Next property is the commutative property of integers and what does it say? It says that if I have two O primes, let us say again minus 5 and plus 3 and if I change the order of those two O primes around the plus sign, so now I, now, now I would write it in a different order. If I change the order of O primes, it does not matter. My answer would still be minus 2. And again, that is to be expected as well. Because if you think about it, all we are doing in generating this answer is that we are looking at the signs of two O primes irrespective of their order. We are simply looking at their signs. We found them to be different. Then we are taking the difference of those two O primes again irrespective of the order. So the difference in both of these cases would simply be just 2. And then finally, we are using the sign from the larger magnitude operand again that would not change in this in from this case to this case just by changing the order uh, of operands would not change the larger magnitude operand that would remain minus 5 here 5 here also and minus 5 here also. So we will take on the my answer will take on the minus sign. Again to take another example of commutativity let us just pick the two operands which have the same sign. So again I choose two operands minus 5 and minus 3 in this case. Now I change the order of those two operands. And let's see what my answers would be. In both of these cases, the way I generate the answer is we look at the signs, they are the same. I'll simply add the two operands and that would be my magnitude. In both of these cases, that magnitude would remain 8 only. And the sign again in both of these cases will remain the same because I pick up, simply pick up the sign of the two operands, which happens to be the same in both of these cases. So the in the nutshell, just by changing whether our sign is different or the same, just by changing the order of these two operands, whether they are of the same sign or different sign, just by changing the order of these two operands around the plus sign, I cannot change my answer and this means that addit addition is of integers is commutative. So that is the commutativity of addition of integers. The next and the most important, again a very important property is that of associativity associative. So similar to the whole number addition of whole numbers, even in case of integer, the addition is associative. What does that mean? Let's take a simple example. We'll take an example of we'll add three integers. So instead of just taking two integers now, we will be adding three integers. And now I'll associate the middle integer either with the first plus sign or with the second plus sign. So let's just write down the expression in the first case. What would that be? In this case, my 3 would go with this, the first plus sign and the 4 would remain alone. In the second case, okay, so this is a square bracket. In the second case, my 3 would go with the second plus sign. Okay, so this is, I change the color just to make it clear that this is a different expression. Okay, and my two in this case would remain alone because my three went ahead and joined with this plus sign with the minus four. So those are the two cases. Let's just solve them and see what the answers are in these two cases. So in the first case, it is minus two plus three. The signs of two operands are different. So I take the difference and I use the sign of the larger magnitude, which is just plus plus and this is minus of four. Of course, again, the signs of the two operands are different. So I choose the, I will take the difference of them and that is 3 and the larger magnitude operand is 4. So I will pick up the minus sign. In the second case, let's see what happens. 
the minus 2 will come as is and now I will take a difference of these two again because the signs are different so I will take a difference and that would be 1. The sign of the answer would come from the larger magnitude operand which is minus. Now the signs of these two uh, operands around plus becomes same. So I will just add them together and of course the will copy over the sign of the operands to the final answer and that is a minus. So my answer really does not change whether I associated the middle operand with the first minus sign, uh, first plus sign or with the second plus sign. This means that addition of integers, addition of integers is indeed associative as well. So the three properties which we saw were true for whole numbers, addition of whole numbers are also true for the addition of integers.